I drew this. My face still looks awful. Still got surgery bruising on my neck. Today is the start of the blobfish. The original concept was going to be an open pour soft plastic swim bait mold. I'm going to go for something more devastating if I were to snag. This is going to be a wooden four piece swim bait instead and I got to draw a belly. I'm going to draw a belly for this thing. Or should I leave it flat like that? No. I'm going to draw a belly for this thing. Once in a while I catch myself trying to take the easy way out. Can't let yourself do that. Draw the belly. That's crazy. This is going to be something different from what I've ever done before. Ooh, shot the cap off my pan. In an effort to achieve maximum blobbishness, I want like the segments meshing into each other, going deep into the recesses of one another, hiding the joint connections and just looking blobby. I think I'll start with the block cut from bird's eye view first, all of this stuff, and then work on each individual piece to match that profile. And then there's like a whole nother axis I need to be aware of and come in from because I'm gonna try to match these angles that you see right here. Like not every joint connection is perfectly vertical. They're gonna be slanted a little bit. I'm gonna use screw eye with the loop this way and then the pin going through top to bottom in kind of diagonal directions. I think messing all of that up not messing it up, but like mixing all that up to where there's different angles and curves is gonna make this thing look really blobby. So as you watch me do that, how about some fun flax? Fun flax. How about some fun facts on the blobfish? Did you guys see this thing? Johan Custom Lures on Instagram sent me this gator. We're gonna make this official in the bait legations this year for sure. I'm gonna go to the ditch and catch pike and smallmouth and largemouth and walleye and bowfin, crappie and wiper. The Cycroludes marketus, smooth-headed blobfish, most commonly called blobfish. This is a deep water dwelling fish between 600 meters and 1200 meters. Off the coasts of Australia, Tasmania, New Zealand, that area, they don't get much bigger than 12 inches, but where they live, the pressure is about 60 to 120 times greater than where we live. They like the pressure. That's about halfway down to the, the Titanic. The Titanic was 3,800 meters. Darn heater. This disgusting gelatinous mass of a fish is made up of just this, slightly less than the density of water flesh. They're studied and understood to have a distinct lack of muscle. They're just, they're not fat, they're, it's still their flesh, but it's just as, as gross as you can think. Sack of gelatinous flesh, that's what this blobfish is made of. But that's to their advantage. Whatever floats in front of their face, they eat. Whatever they can scrounge up off the sea floor, like crustaceans and whatnot, they eat. And it's very quickly able to just turn into this gelatinous stuff that their body's made of. Mr. Blobby is a flabby fish not adapted to be taken out of water. It turns into something else entirely. It'll go from like a sentient life form that seems to have some form of integrity to Something that the most vile words out of all human languages could not describe. What in the world? Is that real? They got the Latin name under it, so it must be. There we go. Don't bring it from the depths. Its disgusting head makes up 40% of its body mass. They don't have a skeleton, and like I said before, lacking a skeleton, they don't have muscles that attach to the bones that move their stuff, you know? They don't have scales, just loose flabby skin. And they must be made of loose fla flabby embryotic cells or something because they can live up to 130 years. This disgusting creature can live 130 years. They have amazing growth and aging processes. You know, that's probably the trade-off. You wanna live 130 years, you're gonna look like that. Even for humans, that's comparable. They can lay 100,000 eggs at a time in their little rocky nest areas deep in the ocean. And they just hover over those eggs until they hatch. They can eat little lobsters, wow. Little sea urchins, crabs. Very threatened species, the blobfish is. Only 420 individuals left in the world, it says. It's not an edible fish to humans. It has extremely acidic flesh. If you catch one, you probably killed it because you brought it up from the depths. Yeah, as soon as they're exposed to the air, they're dead. And the blobfish is officially the mascot of the Ugly Animal Preservation Society. Dude, I can't get this off. In reality, when they're deep down there, they don't look so ugly. They look quite normal. Like that, but when you bring them up, that's when they turn into blobfish material. So don't think of them down there looking like that. They don't look like that down there. They're, their body's just made up of stuff that makes them look like that at sea level. Good to know. 
Fun facts are over. Okay. We got it. Sacrificed the edge of a corner there a little bit, but I'm gonna carve that off anyway, so. We're good. It's gonna be kind of the look of it. There's a ton of spalting in that piece back there. Each one of these pieces is from a different chunk of Tupelo wood. All right, there's work to do. It's official, fellas. The fish with your masterpiece lure making course. It's just cutting the amount of time it takes for fellas to learn how to make baits. It was designed to do that for you. Wooden fishing lures. Everything necessary to know put into a format that makes it quick to learn. How to make your own masterpieces and you can go make them official. Unparalleled satisfaction. It's uh, it's, it's taken over my life and I'm grateful. It's where you can have access to every template I make and ever will make. It's where you can have access to the official bait makers community where creations are shared and ideas are discussed and whatnot. And the entire ever evolving fish with your masterpiece course. Go sign up, go join. One time payment, lifetime access. And thanks to everybody who has. I'm stoked to get the next swim bait lesson out. There's, there's juicy stuff in that one. It's just about done. Thank you, back to the video. Poke in the eye placement real quick. Get those sockets drilled kind of deep. Little quarter inches. I think the smaller the eye, the more blobby looking. They're very forward facing too. Quite recessed. For this nose, I have to think in terms of like deep undercuts. What's gonna happen inside of that wood? It's not something I can draw on the surface and like know what's happening just from a pencil line. So I've freehanded a ton of these marks. Things aren't absolutely perfect. I don't think anyone's ever described this fish as perfect though, so. That was close. It's okay, finger. It didn't get you. Wow, my heart rate just went up. Oh my goodness. That's the closest I've gotten in a while to lacerating myself. Coming off of this sharp belly, there's nothing there. Good thing this finger was just instinctually taking cover down here in its little foxhole. Just death whizzing overhead. Okay, I've calmed down. Trying to get it smooth inside of the joints. I don't need those bandsaw marks, you know? This is such an awkward thing to hold while trying to send a super sharp blade through it. Fingers are just always right there on the other side. It's actually a thing I weigh in my mind before I make a bait. Like how much of a chance do you want there to be for you to cut yourself while you make the thing? And in that regard, I like one piece baits a bit more. I must still be shaken by that close swipe. I'll be okay, guys. This is gonna be a slow floating crank down too, by the way. I'm gonna go for some sort of crank down. Slowly float back up. I wanna put enough wet lead in it to where it's slow rising. Some pretty figure. It grabs a little bit. It smells like Roundup <laughs> chemicals. It's kind of strange. Maybe that's what killed this Tupelo tree. Main feature of the bait right here. Big old blobby snout. That's what I was talking about. Where the details belong are like so deep in the wood. You gotta like redo everything. Like that little lip detail is gonna poke through, but it needs to be redone. I don't know how to describe that, but I think you get it. I've really failed at describing that, but you get it. Wanted to get rid of all that bumpage down there, but to kind of keep it on the edges still, because the gills will make sense with that. Pretty ugly, looking good.
I had the camera a little dark this whole video so far, sorry. Dang, every single one of those so far came off in one swipe. That one took a little bit more. Wood's a little different down here. Blob fish, tail fin. This thing's looking sweet. Look at that blob just sitting there. We gotta start thinking about how these pieces are gonna be attached. This is gonna get complicated. So while I'm thinking about that, I need to cut these fins out and cut the slots in this bait where those fins will be. Bob, Bob, blob fish billions. Bob, blob fish fins. It's gonna get all these glued on Lexan and cut them out. The good old anal fin is going to be on an eighth inch thick piece of Lexan. As you can see, there's gonna be a screw eye going through there, extra supported. Just use your finger, you pansy. I got this little detail of the carbon of the body too. Right by the gills, I never did that. I'm thinking a circle lip for this one. Blobby, you know? What kind of size we thinking, yeah, biggest size. A bit of precise measuring. I need to know exactly that this tab is coming off centered from that circle. Down to the nearest, whatever the heck those are. 30 seconds of an inch. I guess that's not too precise. <laughs> Who needs precision when you can just tune the bait later by bending stuff? The same was done for all those fins. We got nice, oh, missed a spot. Clean to the line fins. This one's gonna get the lip pretty far up towards the nose, and it's still gonna be angled pretty good. Not 45, but I want it to dive. Dude, this bit is so difficult to find every time. Starting small, and then I'll use the correct size one. More accurate when you start small. All right, that's the thickness of the lip. Okay, I think this blobfish will have one lead hole in the front piece and then one back here. Keep it all kind of towards the front and not too far away from each other. There's just so much jointage with this that I think it'll be fine to use two lead holes instead of one for this bait. The only issue is that where I want to put the lead is exactly where the gosh darn front hook hanger is. Yeah, 15 millimeter, 10 milli. This build is throwing me out of my comfort zone with all these strangely shaped pieces. I'm completely backing out of doing those slots, like with the screw eye inserted inside of the slot and pinned through. I'm gonna do my traditional twist wire joints, but I might recess them. That might be the, the cool thing about this, so it's still cool. We try to stay cool on this channel. I need to break this habit of drilling in my hand. It's gonna bite me one day. but not today. I have one more to do, what am I doing? Just about jinxed it. All right, that's enough holage, I think, to make it a much slower rise than it would be just a normal crank down type situation. We want slow rise. I need even joint connection stuff. I eyeball this too. I just, I make those lines and I look at it from the right angle and it's like, are the lines gonna touch each other? In this case, yes that joint's good, I can poke and move on to the next. Whew, that poked right through the lead hole. Whoops, gonna be a lot of wire in this bait too. It all adds up and ends up being forces that make it wanna sink as well. I'm gonna use the good old twisty hand drill thing. I don't know what size drill bit this is, but it ends up being perfect for twist wire. I don't have the joint hardware made, but I have all the holes necessary for the non-existent joint hardware to fit inside of the bait. Before we move on, I'm gonna put lead in this. And I'm, just, I'm gonna fill those holes, and I'm gonna seal those holes, and I'm gonna have faith that that's what's necessary for this bait. I do that all the time, and it usually works out. And here we go. 
I just about poured that lead and I need to plug the pilot holes. Or lead was gonna squirt everywhere. Ooh, it's splashing. I found that UV resin does a super good job of soaking into the wood. Dries extremely hard. Like I filled that up and then it soaked into the wood and then I cured it. And that's gonna just lock that lead in there. Probably better than anything else you could put on there. That was adding a little bit of glass macro spheres to some UV resin. I propped this bait up just right. But yeah, I'm just trying out UV resin to seal the lead holes. It could be quicker and better than five minute epoxy or super bloom baking soda. It's worth a shot. Already set. I could probably start sanding, but I'm not gonna yet. And just give them both the light for a while. I set the flashlight up like that, prop the baits up, make sure they're nice and hard before we start sanding. Probably give that like 10 minutes. Yeah, that's harder than most five minute epoxies are after like an entire day of curing. So good stuff. I'm gonna drill a 16th inch hole right through this big old lead plug in the middle of this bait. And I'm actually gonna do it at an angle so I don't interfere with that joint hardware pilot hole. There, made it all the way through. And it's going that way. Just gonna put some glue in there, super glue, drive that all the way through and then bend it, bend it up so it's straight. So it's not from west to medium perspective at there, we're straight. Well, kind of. Don't worry, I'll adjust it till it's perfect. But we're straight. Got this far and I forgot that little detail too. Let's get that on there. That looks really good. Gorgeous. That is a grumpy looking blobfish. We're going to test this thing tomorrow. So be ready for that. I think I'm looking better. A little bit of bruising still. My neck. That UV resin is just holding up perfectly. I put it all together with the joint connections very loosely. I think the first one's gonna be more of a clackety clack, just the two sides hitting that center piece. I get a bit more rotation out of the next joint and I get even more out of the last, so. It goes from like restricted to free. It's looking like it's gonna be pretty natural. Be ready to see exactly how this thing works. First thing, next video. Thanks for watching. I'll be back real soon. On to the next bait. Bob. My face still looks awful. Bob. Bob. Just use your finger, you pansy. Blob. Blobby. It's okay, finger. Blobby, you know.